Hello, my name is David Poppy, and this is a video on replacing the straight bladed cutter head on the X31 Roblin with a new Shelix cutter head. And what all is entailed to do that? Being this is a multi machine, it's a little bit more involved. You end up having to take the uh, tabletop off with the uh, shaper assembly and motor and the saw assembly and motor out all in one piece to be able to gain access. So I'll go through the uh, points on what it takes to do that. Uh, first things, disconnect your power, which I've already done, and try your start stop switch. No issues. Now it is to uh, strip all the extra guards and uh, access panels off of the machine. Next thing will be the uh, guard for the mortiser. I still have the old style mortiser on there. I have a new one, a new chuck. I just haven't gotten around to replacing it. Up on the uh, top of your uh, saw table, you have a little oval access pad that's going to allow you to get to the pulley for the shaper joiner. It's easier to knock out the uh, pin on this while it's installed. So, right, let's take the uh, mortise and chuck off. We're going to end up taking the uh, planer joiner blades out of here too because we're not going to leave those in. Uh, remember that this planer and everything turns counterclockwise and everything, so when you go to uh, take off the, the mortising head, it's going to turn clockwise to come off. I already loosened it with the pipe wrench just then. The downside to a, uh, getting a sheet of head is that you got to do this twice. Because the uh, Laguna essentially has about eight different cutter heads they used over the years. So you got to take this thing apart and see which one you have and order the according, the according head. This one ended up uh, needing an NLX head and uh, it took about three months to get because it's not one they actually keep in stock. We're going to go ahead and take loose the rest of the uh, panels and everything. You want to loosen off on your, on your lock here on your tilt mechanism because you actually want that to be uh, free for when you go to take off the uh, take off the uh, nut right here that uh, secures that mechanism. Uh, if it's got slack in, it's a lot easier to get out. I'm going to get this rail out of my way. This is actually one of the two points that I'm going to use to lift this table out of. We're going to sling it on each side. And there goes the bar. And the support is off. You got two screws holding this access panel on. Now we're going to take off this bottom access panel right here to get it off. You got to take that stop switch out of the way. Pull up on that panel, and it will release. There you go. These four nuts down here that now, you now have access to, that those are the adjustment nuts for your uh, motor, for your uh, joiner and your planer. You'll, you'll end up having to loosen those off 
to be able to lift that motor up to be able to take the belts off. And those belts will have to come off so that you're able to knock the roll pin out of the uh, pulley on the end of on this uh, joiner shaft. Loosen off just like half a turn on your uh, angle adjustment. That'll make it to where it's able to, you're able to get that uh, screw out easier. There we go. I'm able to slide everything up out of the way. So we're going to end up working on this panel over here. And you got another panel here. Take off. It just snapped off. And of course, you got the uh, panel down on the bottom. I've already taken it off. That'll give you a front view. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna end up taking loose the uh, nut that holds the uh, angle adjustment lever on your saw, which is this one right here, 17 millimeter. Like I said, make sure you've loosened off just like half a turn on your on that. I'm going to take this loose a little ways, and then I'm going to go inside there, and I'm going to take some tape and put it around that shaft on either side of this nut. So we mark where this is at this, the position of the shaft because the uh, the position of where this nut rides on the shaft and where this shaft is going through the nut over here on the uh, uh, holder is essential it's going to make a difference on whether you get your full 45 degree range on it i can show you this but it's be kind of hard for y'all to see it first time i took this off i did not mark this shaft like this and uh Put it back together, and of course it wouldn't go. It wouldn't go full range. There, you can see where I put the uh, tape around the, that shaft. Being that you got the strain off of that, you're going to be able to pull that out now and free that up. There we go. I'm going to take a four-inch hose going to my uh, exhaust on my uh, saw. I did that the last time I had it apart. I missed the measurement by about half an inch, and so I'm going to have to uh, move that. Put about a five degree slope on that to where it, I can get my full 45 degrees. Alrighty, got the four tools off of there. Unfortunately, you got to take some of this wiring loose too. Like I said, the uh, saw motor and the shaper motor are both coming out with it, and so. You got to pull this wiring disconnected and pull it out of the box. I'm going to move this around here so you can see this better. I've got everything color coded now to the color of the wires. I actually made a uh, wiring diagram of it too. Alrighty, so here's the box. I'll shine a light in there so y'all can get a little better look. So this wire here, which is the saw, and this wire here, which is the shaper. Your joiner's over here, it doesn't have to come out. So these two wires right here have to be disconnected and they have to be pulled out of the box so that the uh, motors and everything can come out, out, come out of the saw uh, cabinet. So that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, now I just have the two ground wires to take loose. There it goes. Alright, taking these out originally was a little bit hard because the uh, grommets were stuck onto the outside of the wire. I had to pry them loose and then take some uh, isopropyl alcohol and put down the uh, fittings to make them up uh, to where I could get them out. This one right here and this one right here. So both these nuts have got to come loose up here on the top. No. 19 millimeter works on that one. I didn't tighten them down a great deal when I put them back because I knew I was going to be taking them back apart. And they're stuck already. This one's about 20 millimeter. I got a 21 of them. Kind of screwing them with them. There, that one pushes through. Pour some on there. 
There we go. There it goes. Broke right loose. Same thing for putting them back on. A little bit of alcohol makes makes them just slide right through. You don't need to loosen these a great deal. I just need a little bit of slack in them so you can uh, lift that motor. All right, the last time that I took loose these belts, I took this block right here and put it up underneath that motor on the inside and took a couple wedges and wedged it up. Uh, this time, I'm gonna try to uh, see if I can't pull it up with this uh, ratcheting strap. And this works much better than the block. Now, we can reach in there. It's easier to take loose the belts from the bottom than it is from the top. Now it's time to get the belts off the top side. Just let them fall free down. We're just prying the belts up off the pulley. And there's the second belt. I'm going to bring the uh, camera over here so you can kind of see the, the pulley in there. And the uh, second slot for the belt, you will see the uh, roll pin, the hole for the roll pin. And that's uh, what we're going to take out next so we can slide the pulley off. Alright, now you just need to take a roll pin punch. There it is, and it fell down to the bottom of the cabinet. And that's the very reason why you want to take the sawdust, go ahead and vacuum the sawdust out first. So you can find that roll pin. Either that or you're going to buy another one probably. My pulley is coming over here easy. Uh, they're just a slip fit. Originally, when I went to pull it off the first time, I had to take a puller to get it off because it, it corroded in between the pulley and the shaft. All right, so we're ready, really, to get this thing ready to pull out of here. I'm going to attach a couple straps to it. I just used the threaded holes that the, uh, the bar was attached to. All right, we need to take out the four Allen head screws. There's two right here. And there's two right here. This is what's holding this table down. Here we go. We're fixing to pull the top. There's your pulley. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, the first time I did it, it came out with no issues at all, just straight out. Well, you know, the second time when I film it, it doesn't. Now I'm taking it over to the shop because I got to do a little welding on it. All right, so we're over here in my shop. Here's a four inch chute that I put on here last time. You can see where it was hitting the back of the uh, control box and everything on the uh, cabinet. Uh, I'm going to end up probably having to move this down about three quarters of an inch or maybe just half and I'll change the degree on this. Right now it just comes straight off the back of this. I'll probably angle it in about 10 degrees or so. 